Hi, my name's Phil. I like talking about politics. In this video, I'd like to grab the opportunity to highlight a few thoughts that I've got about a bit of a gaffe from new business and energy secretary Jacob Rees-Mogg as he's caught out in a bit of an unintentional but nonetheless embarrassing smoke and mirrors. But first, if you'd like to be notified of daily news and politics, please subscribe to the channel and click the bell notification icon. So... Uh, <laughs> Uh, this is not the video I was intended to put out. I just couldn't pass it up, though. Just so many thoughts. Jacob Rees-Mogg was out and about today to talk about high streets. He was filmed in a high street promoting the support that the government are about to announce to help struggling businesses. He talks about wanting to keep high streets humming, is the word he used, like the one he was in. Now, so far, this is all fine. In fact, it's the sort of thing government ministers should do. You identify a problem, in this case, struggling high streets or struggling small businesses, and, and high streets are struggling, and for a number of factors. So as the business secretary, you want to help out. You identify an area that seems to be doing well. Well, it's, you know, these, these struggles are not everywhere. Find somewhere that's doing well. You, you link it in with the support your government's provided. Of course you do. Bit of promotion there. All perfectly normal politics. Now, at this point, your reaction as a minister depends on what sort of government you're part of. If you're part of a responsible government, you identify the factors that seem to be allowing for this success and, and find out what, what is transferable to the businesses that are struggling. What lessons could they learn? You could also work on policies and funding that would allow the government to help the struggling businesses. If you're part of a less responsible government, what you do instead is you identify some spurious factors and claim that these are the reasons for the success, and so you should roll it out across the country. What Rees Mogg got caught out was neither of these things. I'm sure some of you have seen it already, so I'll get it out of the way uh, so we, we've all seen it, and then I can go into my thoughts. So here he was being filmed in what he called a humming high street, right? All looks fine from this angle apart from the fact there's no actual people walking across it. But then you go, oh, look at this. Someone took a photo of him filming from a slightly different angle. What, what's that to his left? Is it a boarded up shop? What's that in front of him? Is it a huge pile of rubbish right in the street? And you think, how could he be that stupid? A seasoned politician is very aware of the importance of settings for photo opportunities, right? They're very aware about it. A, 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 a politician of some experience and skill is aware of the need for, for, for PR, you know, for public relations, and uh, or if you want to be uncharitable towards the politician propaganda. But nonetheless, they understand the importance of a photo opportunity in presenting a certain image that you want the, the way you want the public to see you, right? A seasoned politician would not in a million years try to promote the health of high streets by standing next to a boarded up shop and a mile pa pa massive pile of rubbish. That's the sort of thing you would do if you wanted to talk about the malaise. That's the sort of thing a Labour shadow minister might want to do if they want to talk about the damage that the government's doing to businesses. And it doesn't matter that his camera's not pointing at them. Other people have cameras too. In fact, these days, almost everyone walks around with a camera. And you may think, oh, very embarrassing. Quite funny if you're anti-Tory, but does it really matter? Well, you think about what it means. After all, a decision was made. Think that I always think through the process in a situation like this. A decision was made that this is the place to film that segment. He made that decision. This isn't like talking about someone shouting something um, insulting to him and making a big deal of that. You can't help that. You can't legislate for that and random member of the public calling something out, which may or may not be in tune with public thinking. He made a decision to film there. Surely filming it in a genuinely successful high street would have been possible. Like, I, high streets are struggling. You know, I, you can go into any town in the country and there is, you'll find shops that are boarded up. Yeah, of course. But I've been in a couple of high streets in the last year where, yes, there were some shops that weren't open. But you could go down a significant section of the street and there would be shops all open, genuinely operating shops and businesses all the way down. Places where you could have filmed something like that. And no matter which angle someone took a photo of proceedings, all they'd have was shops open for business 
and passers by. I don't know how they actually found somewhere with no basically passers by either. Later on in his little film, there was like six people in the street. They had to really zoom in. And I was thinking, well, but where were the ones behind him? It wasn't busy. Because even from his angle, the angle his camera was pointing at, what was starkly missing was footfall. Where were the people? It's more like a ghost town than a humming high street. I noticed the old fashioned telephone box behind his crew. Rare enough to see telephone boxes at all these days because none of them work. You know, let alone the really old ones that were replaced when I was a teenager in most areas. You do still see the odd relic about, but they're very rare. And I wonder if he filmed there because he needed to be able to view this symbol of good old Blighty from his memories of youth. But, but Minister, we could go round the corner where the shops aren't all boarded up. Is there a red telephone box? Uh, no. No, thank you. We'll do it here. I and then and they could have said, but Minister, no one's going to see it. We're not filming the telephone box. We're filming. The... Yes, but I want to look at the telephone box to inspire me, so I can look misty-eyed at this at this wonderful symbol of the old British Empire. But what the photo actually suggests is one of two things: either a senior member of the government, with the resources of an entire government department couldn't find a genuinely busy high street to film in, or he just couldn't be bothered. Or he refused to film anywhere that didn't have a relic of the British Empire, I don't know. But I wasn't seriously suggesting that third possibility. But regardless of which explanation is true, and I suspect it's the second, it means he lacks the political acumen to, to not try and promote bustling businesses by being filmed next to a boarded up section of high street. I mean, it was right next to him. Wasn't in the far distance where he may have been too preoccupied to notice. He was stood right next to it. He was there. And despite how funny this is, it's also another example of just how unserious our government are. You know, you, you might expect poor political optics from backbenchers. Yes, we know some MPs are not always on top of their game, you know, in the interest of balance. Labour MP Zara Sultana, for example, it seems to be the day for gas. She was... Um, she, she was talking about going to uh, <laughs> enough is enough. So the idea is to promote nationalised public services. But she accidentally slagged off the service of one of our very few nationalised rail companies. Couldn't make it up. You get that some MPs are bound to put their foot in their mouth from time to time because they're not often experts in the policies they're pushing. They believe in their policies sometimes and they're doing their best, but they're not really experts. So yes, they're going to cock up from time to time. But cabinet ministers are supposed to be the most on the ball MPs the party has available, the cleverest, the brightest, you know, um, the, the, the best at critically thinking, the best debaters. In addition, if they're government ministers, cabinet ministers, They've got advisors and strategists paid for out of the public purse to make sure they avoid gaffes like this. If they can't get a simple public message right without embarrassing themselves and their government, how on earth do we imagine they're going to cope with more complex tasks like legislation and funding priorities, things that are actually difficult for even clever ministers? But also on a metaphorical final note, it's also how the Tories work, isn't it? It's how they treat everything from Brexit, public services, even foreign relations. They try and make a point. They draw your attention to something that they say proves their point. In reality, it's just something that doesn't disprove it. But all you have to do is look at it from a slightly different angle and the whole concept falls down. But those are my thoughts. Let me know yours in the comments below. Hope you found the video interesting. If you did, please click the like button. If you'd like to support the channel further, the join button for memberships. And until next time, I'll see you later.